Clint. Hello. There's no music again. You know what that means. What does that mean? You lost Sean Michelle. Sean Michelle, he's right there. He's right there. Look at him. Oh, there he is. We found him. Look at that epic beard. He's sitting next to the dogs playing poker. And it fits in great. No, you know what it really does mean? We've got another interview. Another guest. Another guest. And me and Travis, and sometimes we love interviewing Razorbacks. It's our favorite thing. Yeah. Travis loves yawning. Yeah. For those listening, Travis just yawned. I just yawned. But we're up late for us, and we're old men. But we also enjoy talking to just some some guys that we know and hearing their story. And so tonight, we got a very special guest, Mr. Jonas Goins, who um, unfortunately beat your boy in a jiu-jitsu match. He did. He beat you. But he had his own school. Interesting cat. Got a very interesting story. Yeah, neat guy. Neat guy. And I hope you enjoy his story and I hope you enjoy listening to him. Uh, be sure you like, share, subscribe. Oh, you'll enjoy it. Just listen. Yeah, That's just all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Just sit right here and listen. Or watch or listen or wherever you're yeah. at right now. Wherever you're listening to this right now. Just keep going. So, just do what you're doing right now. Do what you're doing right now. Listen to little Sean Michelle. Keep going. Got Sean Michelle's going to come in. One, two, three, four. And, he, and then and you're going right. to feel right at home. You're going to get amped up a little bit. And then you're going to hear the interview of a neat guy named Jonas Goins. And I didn't know him. Clint introduced me. I met him for the first time on here. And I was impressed with him. Neat guy. Learned some things about jujitsu. And uh, he's a guy that started late in life. And uh, he tells a little bit about what it did for him and um, what he's been able to do in really a short time, Clint. He's, he's not yeah. been doing it too long. And so, um, anyway, just worth li- it's worth listening to, folks. Worth listening to. Worth watching. Even with us on there, it's worth watching. All right. Sean Michelle, Jonas Goins. Dude, what you doing right now? Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Don't stop. Believe it? Just, just, just keep doing. Are you sure Sean Michelle is back? Just Keep going. One, two, three, five. You ever seen a lame man walk? Ever heard a dumb man talk? Never seen a blind man see? I promise you a change this thing. You ever seen a canceled death? Never seen on a poor get fed? Ever seen a prisoner set free? I promise you a change this thing. What's up, everybody? It's time for the Big C and Bigger T podcast. I'm your boy, Bigger T. I'm joined by my man, Big C, Clint Clark. How you doing, Clint? Man, I'm 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 great. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Like excited? really, really excited. You look I'm excited. Up. I'm pumped up. Well, man, since you're excited, we got a special guest today, man, and we want to. Uh, he's a friend of yours, and so I want you yeah. to introduce him to the people properly man it is the man that actually my last competitive jiu-jitsu match handed me an L great 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 guy um I can't say enough good things about Mr. Joe is going Jonas Goins we were interested in raising back football player and Travis kept calling him the wrong name one time Jonas so he's like Landon Rogers, I'm like it's Landon Jackson. That's right. <laughs> so, hey, I've called much worse. So. There you go. So if I accidentally call you Jonas Brothers, I'm sorry. I'm Again. Sorry. <laughs> how many? How many times do you get that joke, Jonas? Yeah. Who'd have thought? Hey, as long as you get part of their paycheck, you're good with it, right? Uh, only. 
if only. <laughs> Now, now, Jonas, I was going to tell you, I told you, you know, tell a story about after or match, we, we went against each other in Tulsa, the Tulsa Open. Uh -huh. um, so after, you know, it just, you know, and afterwards, you know, I, it didn't go my way that day. Right, right. Went against Daniel and uh -huh. fastest I've ever been taken down my entire life. Yeah, yeah, he's a monster. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was it's just front. And then it's just all, you know, downhill from there. <laughs> and so I'd been talking the entire way from Arkansas about how after the match, uh, I'm going to go to the Cheesecake Factory and I'm going to murder some cheesecake. <laughs> right. That's all I've been talking about. And Travis heard this story, and we've talked about it on the podcast before, but I don't, I, I doubt you've heard it. So I go to the Cheesecake Factory. It's wrapped up. I'm, I'm sitting there, my, my my ego's just damaged and now, Jonas, you live in Tulsa, right? Yes, sir. So do you ever attend the Cheesecake Factory in Tulsa? I, I, I have eaten there many a time. Okay, well, <laughs> I um, love now Clint's a little angry with him, so just beware. Got it. Okay. If, if right. you're friendly, you there, the manager. If you're you friendly then <laughs> Clint may try to ruin it for you right now. Okay? Uh -oh. I'm, just thinking, I'm just throwing that out there. So, so me and my guys I'm with, I get, I get up the front. I order, I can't even remember what cheesecake I order, but they didn't have the first one I picked out. So I ended up going my second choice. So he, my ego's damaged. I'm on my second choice of cheesecake. <laughs> so then the people that are riding with me, they go up to the counter. So I'm sitting in the waiting area. I open up my cheesecake and I start eating it. Uh -huh. But keep in mind, and, and despite what Travis will tell you, I'm not crying at this point. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, Jonas. <laughs> See, when, when he told this story before, Jonas, I had to double check. <laughs> he was wearing pants. Okay, good. And a shirt. Uh huh. And he says he was not crying. I was right. not openly sobbing. You know, I'm, like I'm questionable on the openly sobbing thing. <laughs> I believe him when he says he was wearing pants because I think he would tell me if he wasn't. Oh, but anyway. And I'd be ashamed to go around shirtless. So, yeah. Um, last time it happened, they tried to push me back in the ocean. Neither did <laughs> But so, but no, they're like, they tell my pants, like, yeah, tell me you can't eat that in here. I'm like, I'm in the Cheesecake Factory eating cheesecake. Right. And they're like, I figure you want people to come in and see me enjoying the cheesecake. Uh -huh. But apparently, you cannot eat cheesecake in the lobby of the Cheesecake Factory. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, it was a sad story, and I was spicy about it. I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm, weird I'm, one. I'm like, so, I eat so did you eat it anyway? I, I well, I'd already finished. I'd ate what I was going to eat because I didn't want too much dairy on my stomach driving back to Arkansas. <laughs> that's that's the part of being being old now. Right, right, right. I, back in back in my twenties, I just crushed the entire cheesecake, like the entire cheesecake. Now I can't do that. That's when he took his high heels off, threw them at him, and left. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, I'm leaving this establishment. Right. right. That this that was just a day for you. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a rough. It was a rough day. Right. Now, Jonas, you're a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. What other martial arts have um, do yeah. you do? Well, uh, um, you know, obviously, uh, uh, jujitsu is my kind of my mainstay, my main thing. Um, I uh, used to fight MMA. Uh, I, I've uh, fought, uh, you know, regular American kickboxing. I fought uh, Muay Thai. Um, you, uh, you know, I just I just kind of jumped in with uh, uh, both feet. Um, you know, so after after I had, uh, I think I was a a, a blue belt. And uh, started going through a divorce, and uh, I, I was I was I, I had some some issues to work out, and uh, I, I'd start I'd started training uh, uh, do MMA classes uh, over with Todd Ryan at the time, and uh, uh, Dale Cook posted for a uh, needing a two hundred fiver for uh, an amateur MMA uh, uh, fight, and uh, so I, I messaged him said hey. You know who's this is who I'm under. You know I I'd love to do it. I didn't think I'd get the fight, and uh, uh, he says I'll get back to you next day. He says you're in. I'm like oh okay. 
Now, keep in mind, at this point, I've only been training, uh, uh, striking a couple months, you mm -hmm. know. So mainly my base was just jujitsu. And uh, I, I had my first fight. Um, it was uh, uh, it was at the River Spirit Casino. And um, either the first or second punch, he cracked my orbital. And uh, it was like one of those moments where... Uh, <laughs> It, where it's surreal and it's like this is really happening wow and then he kind of comes to a crack and i go oh we're in a fight okay and then <laughs> we went from there and uh but after that uh man i i had the best time i loved it and i would have gone and, and done it all over again in the same night and uh i went you know i was just all into it for for a number of years yeah it, it's funny because me and you actually both went through divorces at bluebell so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. is that a weird thing to have in common <laughs> but, yeah. well purple belts can't be on time to, to warm up and no. blue you know there's the, the, the divorce curse i guess I don't know. Yeah, you can call the disappearing blue belts just disappearing wives i guess i don't know now jonas tell me just a little bit about your life growing up did you get into like martial arts young no you and stuff like that or, or you know, did you oh, i was uh, I was, you know, I, I, I wasn't into anything growing up except getting in trouble, honestly. And, uh, I, I did not, I wasn't super involved with sports to any real degree, um, besides just, you know, playing with the other kids in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I did not get involved with, uh, jujitsu even until I was, you know, 40, 41. Um, so I didn't start doing any of this until I was in my forties and, um, I was invited out to, uh, um, a kid's class to take my kids to meet a, a friend of mine. And it's like, Hey, y'all bring kids, you know, this jujitsu thing. I was like, great. I'd been watching UFC and it's like, Oh, cool. And, uh, I knew some of the guys that were there and they called me. There's like, Jonas, you need to get out here. And I was like, Oh, I can't do that. I can't do this jujitsu thing. And they're like, no, you gotta get out here. And, Man, by the by, the end of that class, I was hooked, and uh, I, then I've been I've been thoroughly committed ever since. But before that, growing up, you know, no real I, I wasn't an athlete. You know, I was like this tall, thin. You know, whenever I was young, I had to, believe it or not, I had the long hair. You know, it was uh, three quarters of the way down my back, and uh, um, you know, I'd wear Har Harley T shirts and get in trouble and and. Uh, uh, so I, I think that I, I played a partial season of football in middle school, but I'd gotten in too much trouble. And so I got yanked out of it. <laughs> so that's no. cool. You got into it, you know, late in life and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, man, that's, that's, that's pretty neat. Now, how many years have you been in? You ain't got to tell your age, I guess, but. <laughs> oh, I don't mind at all. Um, I, I'm uh, going to be 52 here in a few weeks. Okay. And, uh, you know, so I've been at it a little over, a little over 10 years now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, one of the great things that I got out of getting into martial arts is just really getting in tune with the idea of not limiting myself. You know, growing up, I really, I, I had this, you know, this big thing where I just didn't believe in myself and I didn't believe that I could do anything. And, um, you know, and I held on to that for a long time until my my first kid was born. And then that started changing my thinking where I was like, oh, wait, you know, that, you know, I, I don't want my I don't want my kids to to have this limited viewpoint of themselves. And so I started kind of really starting to push myself to, to, do, to do more things. But then I got into uh, whenever I got into jujitsu, it, it really went into it with the idea of you know, let's not put limits. Let's not say what I can and can't do. And then, you know, it turns out that, you know, I was able to do a lot of things that people told me I, you know, I, I couldn't do or I shouldn't do or whatever. Um, you know, I mean, I was, I was fighting, you know, uh, uh, MMA with, you know, I was, I've had, I was beating guys half my age mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, I enjoyed that. You know? <laughs> there, was, there was a certain pride in that. So. Would you say that that idea of um, 
that thought you said you had in your mind of, of you, the limits that you had, uh -huh. you think that was uh, your voice in your head, or you think that was kind of some other voices you had heard growing up? And well, you know, it's people a, too, or just a mix of the both, or what? I I I think that you know we we translate all the information coming in, you know, and you can take two kids. And they can told, both be told the same thing, and they're going to translate that differently. Yeah. Now, um, you know, there were some definitely some issues uh, growing up that were not okay. You know, uh, without getting into detail, but um, but uh, you know, I I really translated things in a way that uh, um, wasn't helpful to me, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. there. There, there came a certain point where um, once I started becoming aware of that as an adult, then um, I had to start challenging that and, and really kind of being responsible for um, changing that viewpoint. And, you know, one of the great things with being involved in competition is that I, I, I've been exposed to, you know, different things that, that have challenged my beliefs and challenged the way that I look at things. Mm -hmm. And that, forced me to have to go, wait a minute, you know, this belief I had about myself or about the world, you know, it's probably not true and it's certainly not helping me. And, it's, you know, having to replace those beliefs with, with new ideas, that makes any sense. So. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, that, and that's why I, I dug deeper on that because I think there's a lot of people out there that have those voices, whether that's internal, yeah. whether that's something they've heard from yeah whatever they've, they've had a parent or a right a bully or something like that you yes. know someone they hear that in their head of you know uh, you're not going to be much you're not going to do much or you know you're not you know you're just you know don't even think about it kind of thing yeah. i think that's where things like sports mm -hmm. that's where things like especially individual sports like jujitsu and yeah like that force you to go past those barriers uh, right because you you know you have to come to a point of you know am i gonna get past this you know i mean as right. you and clint both have right rose up to get your belts you know am i gonna am i gonna achieve you know you're you're a black belt now right yeah yeah so, yeah in 10 years yeah mm -hmm. and that's well, it's pretty good, right? I mean, I don't know a lot about well, it. Took, it took me. It took me thirteen. <laughs> you know, I, but then again, I did. I was a. And you're a beast. I, yeah, I was a three tip white belt. I mean, three tip blue belt for years. But <laughs> but, I, but that was kind of me taking a break. And right, right, and, right. And, and, but, and, but you know what I'm saying? It, it's oh it's, yeah. yeah. That's one of the great things about what y'all do. You know, what? in martial it's, arts, or and I, and I think any sport really. You know, we talk a lot about different sports here. Right. You know, well, but, and, and with my my kids' classes, that's kind of one of the 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 really you know, and really with with everyone that that comes to to, to ground control, um, it, it, but especially with the kids, it's you know, I really want to find that that right balance with you know pushing them, but at the same time, you know, building them. You know, I yeah. I'm not tear down person you know i'm not like i you know some people was like you know that you know tear you down to build you up you know it's like, nah, i don't know about all that um, I, you know for me i i i want you know uh this place to be a safe place where you know the kids can come and yeah they're going to get pushed past their limits they are you know absolutely but they're also going to be built up to believe that they're capable of doing that and i and and that's you know, one of the things where I, I think that there's, you know, there's different styles of coaching. Um, yeah. And and I think that, uh, I, I don't know, I just, I, I want to be that voice that they hear that um, years later, they're going to go, oh, man, you know, that really made a difference to me. And it really helped me. And it really made me believe that I could do things that I didn't think I could do. Yeah, you, you want to build a humble confidence. It's a, that, that it's is, a confidence, yeah. but a confidence that is a very aware. Yeah. yeah. So I, I know, I know what you're saying there. That's good. Well, and, and you know, if you, I, I think someone, 
in a conversation a long time ago, talked about the, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, uh, uh, being humble and, you know, humiliation, you know, humiliation makes you, you know, you, you feel like you're less than, but humble is like you're, you're equal to, you're not greater than, you're not less than. And, and, you know, I think that, that we as just people in general, you know, we should see each other as, oh, I'm an equal to you. You know, we are, yeah. I belong here and, uh, um, and, and I have value and, oh, wait, so do you, <laughs> and, yeah. you know, not, I don't need to be above you or, and I don't need to be below. Yeah, and, and I think that's important in, in any sport, you know, to look at your opponent, to look at anybody and say, look, they can achieve greatness mm. just like I can achieve greatness. Well, I mean, but, you're but today, I'm going for the greatness. You know what well, I mean? Like, and so there's got to be a little bit of a, oh, yeah. Mind, that, there's got to be some confidence there. You know, you got to win. You know, <laughs> you're, you're going in to win. Yeah. Uh, but at, at, at the at the end of it all, um, either A, and this is what, what this is what I tell my kids, is either A, you're going to win. And if you win, we're going to celebrate that. And, you know, good work. You know, you've, you've worked hard to get there. You know, this is good. If you lose, then your your opponent has done you a favor because they have shown you something that you need to work on so you yeah. can get. And and I think that that type of viewpoint is what's gonna, gonna push people to, to get better. So tell us, what does Clint need to work on then? Because you humbled him. <laughs> um, <What, what? laughs> um, is it any, is there anything that cheesecake? Well, I, actually, you know what is I can probably answer that question better than Jonas. Yeah, I <laughs> thought so. about it. No, you know, because me and well, me and John, Jones can tell you what happened to me, and this is this is dealing with with what they call head trash, kind of mm. what we're talking about. So I went out there against Daniel. Oh, the, yeah. I went to Daniel. He foot swept me in about ten seconds. Mm. I mean, it was fast. It it was no fast. foot sweep. No <laughs> foot sweep. He took I was me down. pretty good at that on Street Fighter. <laughs> it goes to tell you in the ultra heavyweight division, the last place you want to be, yeah, is on bottom. It's, yeah. it's a bad spot being underneath I me. Mean, it's a bad spot being underneath Jonas. I can tell you from personal experience. So I got foot swept, got beat, and it was it was probably one of the quickest of it, the quickest of beat I've ever had in a career. Mm. Now I've got Jonas, who's sitting there waiting for me, wait, ready for his match. I've just been destroyed, like <laughs> I've never been destroyed before, and I've got to get it back on track. Mm-hmm. I didn't go for one takedown against you, I don't believe. I sat there and tried to pull guard, and you took me down. Yeah, yeah. I've been working my rat. I got – I let the head trash. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's not – that. and I and I, and I told – because me, I was whining to you. I, I don't know if you call it whining, but we were talking after the tournament. Mm. And, and I apologize. I was like, I don't want to take anything from, from you because you beat me, and you're like, no, I get it, Clint. You can be upset at your performance. Right, right. I'm still giving me credit. And that's what it was. And that's not to say that have I had that not happened of being you to win each other first that you wouldn't have beat me. Uh, but it was just I I lost that I lost that match where we ever slapped hands. Yeah, it it, it you know it is what it is. It's part of you know the game. I could have been part of the whole part of the 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 experience, right? And yeah, yeah and, and and I think everybody, you know, unless you're Gordon Ryan, I guess. Um you know, you know, everyone goes into, you know, a situation and it doesn't take much sometimes to, to make you sit there and question and, 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 and have, you know, bad reflection, you know, and, and your, your brain going to the wrong place. And, uh, and if you get caught there, man, that's a tough, tough place to be. Mm -hmm. No, a hundred, a hundred percent. And it, it was hard to get it back on and you, uh, but also Jonas is a tremendous grappler. Thank you. But he, he did tell me, he goes, he said, I wanted to go for that foot sweep, but Daniel took it from me because you weren't going to let that happen. Yeah. 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 Was it Daniel Damon. Was it Daniel or Damon? I think it's Daniel Williams. Da okay. Daniel's about. Oh, Daniel. oh, Daniel. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. He did take that. I, cause, uh, you know, I, I, I really liked the foot sweep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got it. And I was like, 
Well, great. All right. <laughs> this is a beast, dude. Uh, if it helps at all, I, I've, Daniel and I have gone back and forth uh, several times. We both beat each other. But I remember the last time that I went with him and he was, he had started, uh, you know, he started lifting weights and he got, he got a little bit jacked. And I just remember like, you're already eight foot tall, dude. But it's like, this is not fair. <laughs> it would have been helpful to know that he's a black belt in judo before I went out there. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been helpful. But, you know, he actually went, because I went, went to Vegas to Master Worlds. I had to drop out, of course, but. So I was out in Vegas and I saw him out there and he actually won a match of black belt in Vegas. Wow. Yeah. So that, yeah. That, that, that's no. hard to do, Travis. that is really, really hard to do. Yeah. He, he is. Because no. yeah, they seed you. And so, you know, he got somebody good. Yeah. Person. Yeah. Because yeah, they, they don't set that up to have Bruno Bastos go against Gabriel Gonzaga in round one. Right, 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 right. It is, it is, a uh, it is round they, they make sure that's toward the end. They let yeah. Gabriel Zago against, against Clint. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, no joke, man. He and, and he's also, you know, like just another sweetheart guy. And, you yeah. know, one, one of the things that, you know, I, I think people don't understand is that, you know, from really my experience from white belt on up is that I end up being buddies with everyone I compete against. You know, I mean, we're – we are among the the small percentage of people who choose to place themselves in this weird situation where it's like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna play murder with each other, you know, <laughs> on this mat, and uh, you know, and and afterwards, it's like, oh man, you know, if you got me, hey, great job, man. I mean, wow, well, you really kicked my butt, you know, congratulations. And we can be we can be friendly about it and and have a camaraderie to it. I love that. Now, 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 you've done. Have you done any super fights? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer the super fight format or the tournament? Wh wh which would be your preference, a super fight or a tournament? Um, what is the difference, Clint. A super fight's basically it's kind of like it's an exhibition match, yeah. and it's usually submission only. They're not keeping score. Mm -hmm. different ones have different tiebreakers some of them go to judges decision some of them it's just a tie and then like the one I did against Shane Goforth it's whoever gets the first takedown yeah and so uh, I, I, I I prefer that format because <laughs> you, you have to you you have to be looking for the submission yeah uh, you know I you know I, I did, I've done some submission uh, submission only <laughs> tournament um we it's so easy to get used to the point system and um whenever you don't have that there suddenly you know the you have to approach things differently um and i and i i love the the concept of well you've got to be looking for the submission you got to be looking for the win instead of kind of riding it out you know if you're ahead on points and stuff no because i got caught my last fight i did i actually got caught minute nine of a 10 minute fight oh and yeah uh, and it, it happens i i will you yeah. know it happens but it's one of them deals where like okay i knew i couldn't it, it had judges decisions and i would have had the judges yeah but like, I, I didn't know in my head i'm like okay i don't know how they're gonna see it mm -hmm. so i couldn't just settle i had to advance and i had to keep going yeah and, in that in that format but I personally prefer the points. I like to know that I can sit there. There was actually a tournament. We we're doing the Austin Open. The score was zero, two advantages, zero. Uh -huh. Zero, zero, zero. I had the two advantages. Okay. There were 10 seconds left, and and I had side control. Uh -huh. Obviously, you know what I'm doing. Right. I, I'm like, we're in side control for this next 10 seconds. All right, 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 right. Goes, my coach yelled at me to go to Neon Belly. And I look at him and go, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, like, no, absolutely not. I'm in side control. I've got two advantages. Uh -huh. We're staying here for the next 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, there's, there's a difference between hanging out for, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds. And, you know, whenever people, like, get up in points and then they ride it out for two minutes or whatever, it's like, yeah. 
you gotta get you gotta get more active. At least that. keep at least keep fishing for something and try yeah. to position a little bit. Now, one of the things that really it, it you know grinds my gears. I'm it's, I teasing Travis on our podcast this week that that he that he was spicy, and I this is something that gets me spicy. <laughs> so we're both older guys. I'm 46. You're 51, about to be 52. Yeah. We're both ultra heavyweights, mm -hmm. which is 220 and up. Yeah. I'm closer to the and up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I see a lot of the ultra heavyweight matches where, where they're so much quicker to call stalling on us. Yes. And I've, I've seen the smaller guy matches. I see the middleweight matches where they're doing – they're they're just they're, they're taking the same amount of time to figure out who gets on top, but it's like they're quicker to call stalling. Right. Um, um, do you find that to be a true statement? Yeah, it, it's it certainly feels that way. Uh, the 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 problem, you know, a, a good example for me is uh, I think it was at that that tournament where I had a match against Damon, and Damon's a twenty something guy um who is stout he's strong um you know he he is uh, uh really good uh got a lot of respect for him i'd never rolled with him before um we we we've been friendly with each other we never rolled and when we hook up and as soon as i felt him i knew it was like oh i there's no way i'm taking this dude down and so my you know I, I'm looking at, okay, you know, I, I I just need to keep pushing him and trying to get him tired, and then you know, hopefully, my hope was that he, he would uh, he would go in for a shot, and then I would counter with that. Well, you know, they 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 called us for stalling several times, and uh, but it was like, you know, there's a point in here where, okay, the if this is supposed to be reflective of quote unquote, a self-defense situation, um, you know, I am not going to just throw myself under some big guy. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Now, now in that particular match, my, uh, uh, that strategy did not work out for me because I got tired and, and he did not. <laughs> and, and then he shot and then he crushed me. <laughs> so, you no, know, no, but it does definitely seem that way. I mean, because I, I wanted to go, dude, do you want to come out here and try to take this big guy down? Right, right. I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world to take me down. Despite yeah. what happened against Daniel, it's not the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> but in same thing with, like, somebody like yourself. It's just not easy, and I feel like – and that's something that's been bugging me for a while, for, for years, is I feel like they're so quick to call the big guys for stalling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we move, it means something. And when you're trying to move that guy, get him on the ground, it means something. Yeah, yeah. Because you shoot on one of us and we sprawl, you're you're uh, you're smashed. It it, it, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. No, I won the Chicago Open because some guy shot on me and I sprawled and it was down it was over for him. Uh, now now I know one of the things that I did why you know I what I I didn't Facebook stalk you before a match, I promise. <laughs> um, but we we became friends afterwards. We had each other's friends and yeah, uh -huh. and, and just, you know, you're big into music. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, you play guitar. What what yep. instruments do you play? And tell me a little bit about your music background. Oh, um, well, I uh you know whenever I talked about earlier about not limiting myself, um, you know, I had been I'd kind of been involved with music off and on my whole life. You know, I, not, you know, I was never like super talented or anything, but, you know, it's always been an interest. Um, but it was one of those things where I just told myself, it's like, oh, you're not good enough. Why bother? Okay. So uh, my first kid is born. And then, you know, I'm kind of going through this challenging of my beliefs. And, you know, it's like, what, you know, what is it that I want to show my kids? Um, so that was one of the first things that I started really jumping into was uh um music and you know and I, i've written stuff off and on for for many years um but so i i started uh um playing and trying to put some songs together and teach myself how to do that and then i had a friend that said hey you should go do this open mic thing 
And so I started doing these open mics and then I started meeting other musicians and it kind of grew from there. Um, you know, so I've, I've been involved with music off and on for, for, you know, a good, you know, 20 years now. Um, and I, I, uh, yeah, I, it's a very wide taste. Um, a, a majority of my stuff is really kind of singer songwriter acoustic base, but, uh, you know, I also had a, a really fun project that was kind of, a uh, 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 more of a, a, you know, heavier rock thing that, uh, I got to sing for that. And, uh, but my, my, I play, I play guitar. Um, you know, I play, I, I think of it, I, I play well enough to be able to put songs together, but you're never going to see me, um, you know, ripping leads and, um, <laughs> you know, being a guitar hero. So but there's something like that about getting out of your comfort zone yes. and getting up front of people. Cause me and this entire podcast got started because me and Travis were talking about doing open mic night at the, uh, the couple hut. And uh, we were, but we were talking about like, Hey, we do this. And, you know, we both were thinking about doing it and we haven't ever done it just cause it seems like it's usually a Sunday night and, Travis is working on Sundays. The one day yeah. the work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, but so we, we, we've all, we've been talking about doing it. And, and of course there's the like, oh my, well, no one's going to think I'm funny. Right. No gonna, yeah. gonna, they're going to laugh at me and not in a good way. It's just going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, in the reality, everybody would probably be very supportive, but you know, there's just, there's that fear because like even, doing that like every jiu-jitsu tournament i get to the point like at some point i'm like why the crap do i do this why do i put myself through this like yeah. just get through this when you never have to do another one yeah. and then you get out there and you have fun yeah yeah, so, yeah. i i in jiu-jitsu and mma and muay thai all of those i've had many a time where I find myself in the middle of, you know, a mat or a cage or a ring and this is going like, I volunteered for this. <laughs> what's, what's going on here? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. It, but it, it's, yeah. All right. Chal if you, if you yeah. think that's headsy, you should try preaching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These people, some of which are older than me and wiser yeah. than me. Uh, are listening to me for advice right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, that can go to your head too. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. But yeah. No, no, you also have a you do a thing where you interview other jujitsu guys, right? I do. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. I mean, because well, I saw that you had I saw you had some really cool guests on there. Yeah. Um, so I just started kind of doing that on a on a lark, really. Um so I, I get out to a lot of local gyms. Um, I always have. I love cross training. I'm oh, a big yeah. believer in it. Um, and, you know, I, I just, you know, I think that Tulsa in the kind of the 918 area, um, you know, has like a really special vibe to it. Um, it's very supportive. Uh, you, can, you can cross train at most places and you're going to have experience. But I, I, you know, I have these great conversations with people that, uh, you know, the idea is like, man, if I could just, if, if I could have this conversation and, and other people be a part of it, then I, I think that that has value. And um, so I just decided, it's like, well, you know what, I'm going to, I'm just going to see if uh, some of these people that um, I admire or I like or I enjoy talking to or are just interesting, um, you know, want to come sit down and, and, and talk. And that's all it is. And I, I'm not going in with any agenda. I'm not going in with any type of, you know, gotcha. You know, it's just, wow. hey, what, what's, your, what's your experience? Um, I, you know, I, I, want, I want people to talk about their jujitsu experience because um, it's, it, I think it can be, it, it has value. It, and at, at times can be profound um and 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 it can change people's lives and, really? yeah so i that's i don't know i'm just going around i actually i've got a uh i'm doing another one tomorrow but uh um you know some of the people that i've interviewed are you know kind of some of my my local heroes you know people that i've looked up to 
um, and that that I, you know, it's like I, I want to I want to grow up in jujitsu and be like them, you know. Um, yeah. And and then other people where they they the way either you know the way they compete or the you know sometimes it's just the way they conduct themselves. You know, I I, I really respect people that treat people well and are givers and are all about um you know trying to uh, uh kind of spread you know sp spread the spread the the whole thing about jujitsu and try to share it with other people um i think that it's easy and and years ago whenever i first started in jujitsu you know the the environment was different in tulsa and it was you know, i felt like every gym was like a gang you know and you couldn't go you couldn't go cross train and you know there were attitudes and you know there were several fi several figures that really helped change the environment and the tone of uh, um, the way the schools worked around here and the, and, it, and it changed it changed everything um it and does so seem that late rightly jujitsu politics has gotten to be less of a thing yeah yes and i I'm think I, I don't know about, you know, I, I mean, I've gotten to travel through uh, past jobs and, and I've got to uh, 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 go roll it in a lot of different places. In most places, people are, are pretty friendly and open. And then there are some places where I, I felt like they thought that I was there to steal something from them. You know, where, you know, it's, it's like I'm, I'm paying you money for your mat fee and you're treating me poorly. Why is this? Yeah. <laughs> No, and that's one of my favorite things to do is when I travel is to go take a class somewhere. I mean, I yep. went, went to Cobra Kai in Las Vegas. Nice. Uh, like, that was cool. And actually, I got to, I, my 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 father-in-law lives in Houston. Uh -huh. So I was actually, I was, I got a guy named John McCown. I'm 0-3 against him. Uh -huh. in Houston. Meet him through just competition. Yeah. Like, like, like me and him were there, and I, I stopped by his gym and, and we got to we got to roll a little bit. And he's like, Clint, listen, I can tell you're being one of them guys that's trying to come here and be nice and not go hard. Uh -huh. This ain't that gym. <laughs> let, it, right. let it go. I go, okay. All you right. know, dude, it's really, but the experience you have, you know, doing that. So have you met anybody famous yet while you were out there at a jiu-jitsu tournament grappling? Um well, you know, <laughs> you know funny enough, uh not really at grappling, but I did. Uh, I, I met uh, Donald Cerrone at an airport in uh, Denver. Uh, okay. I was there for work, and uh, I'm walking by, and I was like, "That dude looks like Cerrone. What a, weird!" And I, I kind of did a U-turn and walked back by, and I look again, and holy crap, that's Donald Cerrone! And so I kind of start hovering over that direction, and he's on the phone. And he sees me, and you know he can tell. You know, yeah, like, like, he can tell your fangirl in a little bit. And so, and he was so cool. He, uh, um, I, I, I was trying to be respectful and not, you know, crowd him or be, you know, anything like that. And but he, he made eye contact, and he's like, "Hey, man, let me finish this, and, and then I'd love to talk to you." And um, so I just kind of hung back. He did his thing, and then uh, uh, he he hung up, and he came over. He's like, "Hey, what's up, man?" so cool you know and and got to take a picture with him great guy i loved him he was fantastic yeah see because i met um the professional wrestler mvp oh wow okay yeah uh, he, he's actually he's a brown belt at gracie baja in houston north and houston north carolina houston texas uh -huh. i was actually going to train with him one time and he happened to not be there the night that we were going to train because me and him were messaging back and forth on I, I, of course he's a little busy now because he's, he's re-signed with wwe but Okay. Well, we did the Houston Open together. Uh -huh. um, he wasn't in my bracket. He was, I think, I was a purple belt at the time. He was a blue belt. Okay. Then the purple belt on podium. That was just me flexing, saying I met MVP, and we talk on this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was all. That was all there was to. Do. I'm just flexing, but yeah. No, that's so, cool. Met no, really, I, no, I've not met anyone. And have you met anyone, Clint? <laughs> I know. I was like, <laughs> Ask, I'm just going to tell you. We did say Travis is going to start dating Ariana Grande here soon. So we, oh. yeah, that's a yeah. I'm gonna, 
I have a former student that was in my youth group that's uh, uh, probably going to be on the has a good chance to be on the voice. Uh -huh. And so um, I was telling Clint about that on here and <laughs> somehow it turned on. I was like, well, I got to figure out a way I can get involved in that. And I said, maybe I can go be a spiritual advisor. There you go. That sounds yeah. more Californian, you know. Well, but then you're going to have to like get a new wardrobe. You're going to have to get like a you know, with it. Well, see, that's what I was thinking. I'd wear like a robe. I'd I like go it. bald. With get a, get a nose ring. Earrings, a nose ring. You know, and then like when he's trying to choose like which coach, I could just stare intently into the camera. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. And then Clint threw out. He said, "You'll marry Ariana Grande," and that, that's what. <laughs> Done deal. He'll, be, he'll get in once he gets some of them stars. He's gonna that's right. One, one time, you know. And believe. <laughs> that's right. I believe. I believe. <laughs> Yikes. When did you decide <laughs> to open up your own school, bud? Pardon me. Say it again. When did you decide to open up your own school, ground control jujitsu? Yes, sir. Um, so I we actually opened in July of 21. Uh, I was still brown belt. Um, I had worked at my previous job off and on most of my adult life i'd been back and forth at the same place like three or four times for long chunks of you know time um mm -hmm. in, involved in the uh, uh um it, it was a uh, uh drug and alcohol rehab facility in tulsa and um we had kind of navigated covid and i thought we financially i thought the company was i thought we kind of gotten over the hump and I was wrong. <laughs> they, uh, they had to basically, you know, do some cost saving stuff and say so they, they eliminated, uh, several, uh, management positions and mine was one of them. Um, so suddenly I found myself without a job and I'd been thinking about, you know, I, the idea of eventually, you know, someday having my own school, um, and you know okay i don't have a job you know it's like well you know someday might as well be now and i had i had not i had, didn't have a plan i didn't have money i didn't have anything <laughs> it was just, okay we're, we're gonna figure out how to do this and um i've had people kind of just show up in my path at key times that have been lifesavers um i uh you know started asking around some of the gyms it's like hey do you have any mats that you want to get rid of for cheap or, or whatever and and i uh I'd, I'd already talked to matt who i built under matt vernon you know and, which is at primate and then, and uh, he is in turn under christian durr in clinch and then he's in turn under jean-jacques Pachado. And uh, so that's kind of the lineage there. But uh, I, I, I talked to Matt and, and he knew this is something I wanted to do and he supported me in it. But I talked to Christian and uh, uh, just about Matt's. And he's, he's like, well, man, why don't we get together and let's talk about this. And, and so we got together and, and he, uh, you know, he's working on a project that uh, uh, is an online um, uh, deal that helps people with uh, schools with jujitsu schools and so he he basically has mentored me and you know all the way through you know here here's what you need to do here's the mistakes i made here's you know pointing me in the right direction and uh every, you know things are just falling in place i had uh, a student that i've been teaching for a while that came out of nowhere and said hey you know let me let me uh, uh front you the money for your mats and, you know, I was like, man, you don't have to do that. And he's like, no, 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 I really want to do this. And so, you know, suddenly, you know, we ordered mats and I've got mats. And then um, I was looking around at, at, at places to go. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to uh, open up and just be another person in town that's, you know, a, a mile or two from someone else. I wanted to, where, where is an underserved area? And so um, I, I kind of checked out Glenpool, which is where I am. You know, things are growing this way. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, the whole area is growing. And it, it's, you know, in my opinion, underserved. There's, there's not a school in Glenpool. You know, there, there are in surrounding towns. But uh, uh, so I 
someone said, Hey, you should come talk to Joe at the uh, Bellator CrossFit. And he's got, uh, I think he's got some space. And so I came and talked to Joe and, you know, he didn't know me from Adam and, you know, we had a conversation I could tell he's kind of like, mm. and then, you know, we had another conversation and then he got excited about the idea and then a uh, third conversation. And then, then suddenly I've got a spot, you know, here at CrossFit Bellator, which is where I am now. And uh, Joe at, at CrossFit has been, man, he's been super, super supportive, um, very thoughtful, very kind, very giving. Um, and so it's just been like all these people that have, have been helpful to me and, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're a little school, uh, um, you know, I've got to work at, you know, I've got a side job I work security to, to, you know, make the, make ends meet and, and still don't meet, but, uh, you know, just doing, doing what I do now, I, 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 there's nothing else I'd rather do. There's just, no, this is. And I, I, I love it. Um, I get to use all the all my best attributes. I get to really be of service to people. I get to help help others, and I love it. So, so how about how many students do you have now, Jonas? And uh, uh, all together, um, you we're in the mid thirties right now. No, oh, that's that's awesome. See, I had my own school for just a little bit. Yeah, and I hated it. I just hated it. I hated. Uh -huh. it. And I just, I just did. It wasn't for me. And yeah, yeah. I, but I was able to, but I, I, I had that itch. I scratched it. I was like, okay, yeah. I'd rather just go be a student. <laughs> right. And just, and just fill in, you know, I'm, <laughs> rather be a student. Like, I'm able to teach. I got a class I teach. Right. I teach right. Guys. Um, now when you got 30 students, obviously you go to these tournaments and you have to coach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How is it more nerve wracking? It's obviously for me, it is. It's more nerve wracking to me to coach, yes, than it is to go out to go out there and do it because you see what they should. It's like so much easier to see like what they should be doing, right? Over there so at that, I think it was the tournament that we were that 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 we had our match. If uh -huh. I remember, that was the first tournament that I had some of my students in a tournament. And so I, I had never done it that way. I had helped out at Primate before, but they weren't mine. You know? Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, and I was just helping. Um, but suddenly, uh, you know, that, that was the first time where I was like, oh, you know, competing and coaching at the same time. I don't know. Uh, because I started to not care about my matches. Where I was so caught up in, in, in their matches and I was emotionally involved with them. And yeah. it, man, I got to get my match over with because I got someone over here. Yeah, no, I got in trouble for, like, cutting across the pulpit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, oh, Carlino's <laughs> son-in-law was like, D did you not hear me? I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't. <laughs> I tried to run over here. Later on, I'm. I apologize to him, but then I'm wearing my black belt, so it shows me a little bit of respect. <laughs> when I just treat I was just a piece of crap. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, Jonas, man, we appreciate you coming on. We've kept you about an hour. My my pleasure, man. I I I, I, I thank you for for having me on here, and hopefully it was uh, worthwhile. And and yeah. uh, well, I think it was great. I mean, I. I knew you, but I didn't feel like I knew you that well. Like I said, just being friends with you and what we talked, I'm like, this is an interesting cat, and I think he's got an interesting story, and I want to talk to him. I appreciate it. Well, I didn't know you at all, and now I feel like I do, and I appreciate you coming on, man. It's been it's been nice getting to know you a little bit and uh, hearing, you, hearing your story, what makes you tick, and uh, yeah, what motivates you a little bit, and uh, and what what kind of keeps you rolling. And, uh, you know, keep it going. I know you're making a difference in those 30 or so lives, those people that are you're coaching and training. And, and right. uh, that's making a big difference. Thanks, so, sir. Appreciate plug, that. Yeah. Plug your school and your websites real quick, Jonas. Yeah, it's it's uh, ground control jujitsu. Um, so if you uh, the, the, probably the easiest way to find uh, any of them is if you do a search for ground control jiu-jitsu glenn pool then you're gonna you're gonna find a link to the website you're gonna you know the facebook i'm all 
I, I, I try to be on all the social media. We got, I got a TikTok. I got all that. So um, no, I don't TikTok. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it probably saves a lot of time in your life. <laughs> well, Jonas, man, we appreciate you big time for joining us and uh, on the Big C Bigger T podcast, and uh, you for uh, educating us and for whipping Clint because he needs to stay humble. I, I, he, he did. I, his, I his won the Arkansas head. Open and I came in with a big head, and you his know head, his head they, gets too big. His head gets too big, you know. I mean, my experience is, is that I, I I never take it for granted because uh, I, um, you know I've got a whole handful of guys that I've been competing against with for years, and I'll whoop them, and then they'll come back and they'll whoop me. <laughs> the fun of it. <laughs> well, hopefully, I get healthy at some point, and we can run this back at some point, Jonas. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. Well, Jonas, we appreciate you, folks. Thanks for listening watching or whatever you did to to be a part of this podcast have a great week and uh don't forget to like and share on all the places where you can like and share uh, check us out on spotify on apple on tune in radio on iHeartRadio, radio on wherever you can find podcasts we're there Thank you so much. Thanks once again, Jonas Goins. Thank you. Good see. Peace out, homie. Bye, everybody. Sweat. What? Filthy. Dirt. Harvest. Hurt. Kingdom come. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard rhymes So I can sow the seed in a bread and no eggs and pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead That's why I swear when I